Uh, this video goes for 33 minutes so it's a bit long uh, but if you're interested then uh, go right ahead. Well this is another piece of uh, almost antique gear that um, I acquired many years ago. I bought this brand new in I think about no it was exactly March 1975 was when I was on a, a cruise in the Pacific and I bought it in Fiji when uh, Fiji was a, a really good duty-free place and uh, I bought this as well as the TIAC cassette deck the A450 and this was for playing portable whereas the deck was for recording at home this is a Sanyo M2420 AM FM radio cassette recorder. I forget what it cost me, but it was something like $50 back in the day. So probably multiply that by, I don't know, five or ten times. So yeah, probably somewhere between two and four hundred dollars nowadays of course uh, <laughs> everything is so much cheaper now but but it was uh, it was a good thing to have and it's served me really well but uh, don't know if you can see but it's it's filthy it's a really good clean and and from memory the power socket doesn't work too well the switch doesn't work too well and the tuning is uh, off but whether it actually plays cassettes I don't know right no batteries which is good so they haven't gone all leaky all right let's see if it actually turns on has off FM AM tone volume and the cassette uh, functions Too good. The federal government has released its draft mandatory code of conduct. For oh, the AM if AM works all right. Walks around, gets onto the left foot. Uh, switch is uh, still not good. Okay, well it's promising. Get back to FM. Oh. Okay, good. All right, so that's working. It's just really bad switches and knobs and whatever. Okay. Oh, well, look, set work. Let's try our infamous Merle Haggard. Okay. Play. Oop, not a thing. Stop. Nope. No, not a thing. Won't move at all. All right, so not even sure if the electrics work unless we can get it to move. So, all right. I'll uh, have to, it's, I'm getting dirty hands here. I'll have to give it a really good clean and uh, then we'll open it. 
Well, it's nice to get it reasonably clean. It's not like new, but but doesn't have a, a layer of dust on it uh, as thick as uh, you know the Earth's crust. Just trying to see if I can see how dirty the heads are. Or well, the head, not heads. Uh, reasonably clean, all things considered. Okay, there's a, a motor running, but but uh, naturally no capstan turning. One thing to work out is whether this power socket is okay. So. AM is a bit more reliable. More than one or two minutes, but it's it's right where the ball's going to be. It's going to bounce yeah, within two or three metres of it. Oh, the footy, so in the that so won't upset YouTube. Forward, which means Bell Chambers is in the rough as well. It upsets me though. So here we go. Yeah, that wiggles. All right. Try a little bit of Mr. Deoxid in the socket as well. It might may not be the this, it might be actually this. See what happens. Oh, it's better, but still, still has it. I wouldn't be surprised if it's this lead. All it needs is those pins to be separated a bit, the socket. And uh, not closing properly and it would do that so the thing is how do we make it better well yeah make sure you can see this other end of it when you're doing this Just a little bit of pressure, we'll see what happens. Oh, grips better. Don't want to do too much or I might break it. Oh yeah, much better. So that's, yeah, all these years in my garage having it in use and uh, every now and again I'd have to go across and give this a wiggle and all I had to do was just, you know, just compress the uh, socket uh, pins a bit in the lead. Uh, anyway, we'll see how it lasts. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, it was only the foam. The foam that was uh, cushioning the, the rod antenna. Fortunately, the, the telescopic antenna just comes off with, uh, with a little clip. Yeah. Okay, so the off AM FM is the whole lot of levers and whatever, and it switches this switch here. So I'll give that a bit of a spray and okay, let's try some spray in this switch. Don't know if it does another function, but certainly that switch. Yeah, there's another switch here. I bet that's a record switch. Yeah, it'll be the record for sure. All right, give that a bit of a spray. Not that I will ever be recording with it. to hold down the, the little lever that that goes into the cassette to tell it that it's uh, able to be recorded on. Push that down and then I had to press record and play at the same time. Actually no, I only needed to press the record button. Yeah, yeah, but that lever has to be down and away. So. Uh -oh. These little open slider switches all, always give trouble. So there's this one and this one. I dare say that one would give trouble too, except uh, oh, I suppose it will. Not that I'll ever need that one. Okay, oh, let's try. Yeah, the tuning knob's a bit uh, noisy, but that means cleaning the variable capacitor, which is probably just full of dust and crap. 
I might try and blow stuff out if I can, but otherwise I'll just leave it. It's all right once it's there. Ah, this switch has come good. That's great. That was that was always giving me the irrits. Excellent. Yeah, now the volume knob. Oh well, we're chipping away at everything, that's good. Yeah. Haha, there we go. Wasn't sure if I could get to it, but I can. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> not worried about the tone control, it seems to be not too bad. Oh, then again. Can I get to it? But that volume, oh, excellent. Uh, this stuff's pretty good. Yeah, I think I can get to it. Oh, yeah. Yep, job done. Got a player running on the wing in Neil, but the kick is. Not enough to worry about. Oh, that's excellent. So, we have volume that works, tone that works, switch that works. I am always louder. Oh, that's right, because I, I took off the FM antenna. Yeah, all right. OK. We're on to the cassette now. Wow. This is going to be a little bit harder. I have a awful feeling I'm going to have to take everything out to get to it. I hope not. The belt that's in it... Oh, no. It just collapsed on me. <laughs> Shit. All right. Oh, that might be why. Yeah. Yeah. That explains everything. That's why the motor was spinning, but nothing was happening. Nobody was home. Is that for a belt? As. All right, so I reckon that's all it is. Give the heads a clean 
and then change the belt. Now the problem is getting a belt. Ooh, I always try and like to get Gen 1 ones if I can. I've got a bag full of rubber bands but oh, that's not such a good idea. Oh, remember Lulu to say with love? Yeah, that's that. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, going all right uh, with this uh, beast. I uh, tried to uh, see if there was any new belts for it on eBay, but uh, I couldn't find a cracker. I was uh, lucky though. I not that I need it, but I I did find a schematic for it and a. Uh, and a layout of the circuit board so if I ever need it I, I've got it now uh, hifienginecom they're fantastic for uh, so, so much in the way of uh, hi-fi gear they don't have much of anything else but but these are the things I really want so it's fantastic anyway back to this uh, <laughs> So I couldn't find a belt. So what do I do to replace this thing? Well, first thing I'm going to do is put it in a little bag. I've tried to get as much out of the player that I could. And I think that's most of it, if not all. If I find some more, I'll stick it in the bag. Just in case uh, I need to measure it. And a lot of dirt came out so what am I going to do well I ordered a couple of bags of belts of all different sizes a mixed bag I, I thought oh that might be a good idea though they're, they're cheap enough so I thought I'd I'd buy one from uh, two different uh, sources so two bags are coming via eBay in mail and so I reckon I'll I'll find one in there that will do the job. However, in the meantime, I'll go back to my usual bag of uh, rubber bands. Ta-da! My rubber bands from the uh, from the newsagent, and uh, I'll try and find one that fits, or at least temporarily just to see if the thing works and that's really all I want well it's pretty easy to see that it goes around there and uh, there's a little tab here which I'll just yeah there we go and I've got to take this cover off the idler wheel it's also a good chance to give it a clean I'm assuming this pulls out. Yep. Right, I'll give that, give all these rollers and whatever a clean. All right, I'll uh, give it a good clean. I'll, I'll come back. Adding just a just a touch of grease in some of the uh, contacts or the switches, sliders. A lot of the grease is sort of gone hard, disappeared. The mechanics of these things are just incredible. Uh, it's like VCRs. I'm just amazed at the mechanics of them. The guys who designed the, the layouts are just incredible, it's especially VCRs. Just incredible very clever those Japanese unfortunately not so clever about 70 years ago but eh, we all make mistakes right I've just put on a rubber band about the right size so I've got power in let's see if it plays Oh, yes. Look 
good old Merle Haggard again. It sounds semi reasonable. There's not much woe at all. Alright, so I'll put this back on so I can turn it around and uh, give the uh, heads a bit of a clean, which I don't think I've done yet. Still haven't got my demagnetizer yet, so that will have to wait. So any calibration tapes just have to wait. Not that I think I'll bother calibrating much on this. Azimuth might be the only thing I adjust on this particular machine. It's playing. That's my trouble. If I can't see the tears off. Quite a lot of wear. Well. But I wonder what you think about. But I've tried and tried to uh, free it up. don't know what I could do to fix it. it. It could be the rubber band I'm using is flexing. So it's sort of coming in and out of tension, which is causing the, the wow. That's a possibility. So until I get uh, proper belts for it, a belt for it, I can't be 100% sure. But the good thing is the radio works which is really all I used it for in the latter years of my use of it. Well, how, how did you like Merle Haggard again? Yeah, pretty bad wow. I, I'm hoping that it's just simply a rubber band that I put in temporarily. Anyway, I've now received some little bag of uh, spare belts so I'm going to see if one will fit. Let's see how it goes. Better. Stop by and see me. Better, better. Let's fine tune the belt. I really need to get a hook I can use for this sort of thing. I'm 
These are handy just to see if something works, but they're, they're prone to have a, a lot of uh, wow. I've noticed that in uh, in the other units is that it's because they're stretchy, they sort of and that's why they wow. For some reason, these rubber ones, even though they feel the same sort of flex, they they actually seem to perform better that way. Thank goodness. Alright, I'll put it back together now and I'll just try one more. Go Merle. I've got everything I need to drive me crazy. Terrific. Oh, not Merle, but uh Wow. <laughs> the very best of Merle Haggard. Ooh, I'd hate to see his worst. All right. Packed up and fully functional. Ready to take out again. I used to use this a lot when I was young with some batteries and uh, going out in the car and uh, with my friends and whatever was was very good very good all right well I think that's uh, the end of the job I'll give the aerial a bit of a clean and uh, then that's that okay hope you enjoyed uh, my old uh, portable Sanyo M2420 with uh, cassettes well you that you can go to rest now. You can have a rest. And uh, you can have a rest too now. <laughs>